they needed this. Italy needed this game. There comes those games in which you need to be awoken. Because the worst thing that could have happened to Italy, because remember, the, the assumption was, is they're going to come in. They're going to destroy these dudes. They're going to give birth. Who are these Austrians? Who the frick, who are the frick of these Austrians? It's like the team who scored seven goals in the group stage. This is the team who've just been destroying and beating everybody in their path. That was the notion. And Italy could have very easily have lost this game. Because what makes you a true champion or what makes you a potential true champion is dud. Degree of, di of difficulty. Can you go through difficult times? Can you really come through the trenches and say what's up? And what Italy showed here was, you know what? When our backs are against the wall, when we are truly under pressure, we can come through because that is part of character building and that is the part of what makes you a champion is coming through games like this, which games you should win, which are difficult, but you find a way to pull through. And he has a new name, Federico Clutch Chiesa. The kid is 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 the kid. Um, game of the tournament so far, match of the tournament so far. Like prior to this, the best match I would say was the um Ukraine Netherlands game. I thought that was the the best match of the match of the best game of the Euro so far. And this is has now surpassed that. It's so it's so funny how football works. Coming into this, I was like, oh. Austria, I mean, Austria are decent, Austria are okay, Austria are I, but Italy have looked so good, they've looked so many, they've scored so many goals, that Austria just don't stand a chance. And when you saw the first half and how Italy were, were, were playing, my thing was, oh, it's, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time until Italy score. We'll talk about Marco. See, guys, we'll talk, we'll talk about it. I don't know. And we'll have a discussion about it on the hangar. So before we talk about it on the hangar, let me get my piece about Marco. I want to get my piece about Marco, and then we can have other discussions. But let me just get my piece. But before we get to Marco, um, look, it's Mancini made a big call. He made a big call um, by saying, and this is, it just shows you how difficult things are as a manager, because he made a call. And let's keep it real. The two players who turned this game around didn't start the game. They came off of the bench. So the guys that started this, this game didn't do it for Italy, and they could have almost lost it for Italy. Because if Arnautovic was just a few inches back, if it was just a few inches back, I don't think if that Arnautovic goal stood, I think Italy would have been heading out of, of, of these Euros. But as... Italy probed and probed. You were like, oh, the goal is going to come. The goal is going to come. The goal is going to come. But then once they didn't score, I was like, Austria are in a great position right now. They've suffered. They had like one attempt on goal in the whole of the first half. But how football works is you don't worry about the stats and the numbers. All that matters is the only stat that matters is that stat in the top left-hand corner. Forget about Goal attempts, shots on targets, possession. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> All that matters is what's the state in the top left-hand corner. And for Austria, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. We are still in the game. All we need is just that one opportunity to score, and we can steal this. And that's happened before. All we can do, because we can easily steal this. We just need to just stay in the game. And after the first half and the second half wore on, because I was saying, you know, Mancini, you've got to make a, a call here. And you see... The thing with Marco is this. I still believe in Marco. I will always believe in Marco. I will always believe in dribblers. I'll always believe in ballers. There is nothing you can say to me that will ever make me never believe in ballers and dribblers. Never. I'll never do that. But I'll keep it real with you. Marco didn't give Italy and Mancini what they wanted. He didn't give them what they wanted. Saying he bricked it, I think, is a bit too harsh because I did see him play a few good through balls. And I still see him so play a few balls. But he didn't give AC what he wanted. And you could argue that, yeah, he flopped. See, bricked is a bit harsh. 
But he flopped based on the expectation because we're talking about one of the most talented midfielders of all time, and he didn't play to his standards. And he wasn't, let's put it this way, he wasn't as influential as he should have been. Berardi is useless. You know, I, I think the guy is useless. Hence why we'll, we'll, we'll get to Chiesa. Um, and where Immobile is concerned, all Immobile really did was that amazing shot that I hit the bar. His first touch is horrible. Your okay, yes, your currency of a striker is the goals that, that you score. One of the main reasons you score goals and one of the main things that lead you to scoring goals is your first touch. Your first touch is everything. Because if your first touch is good, that puts you in a great position, perhaps puts you bearing down on, on the keeper on a 1v1. Because there was an opportunity where the ball went over Immobile. If he had, if he had a better first touch, he was in on goal. He was in on goal 1v1. But so many times he lost his touch and everything to the point that Mancini got frustrated and said, look, Balotti ain't that great, but at least I feel like he can hold the ball up and they can, that it will stick. If the ball goes up to the striker area, at least it will stick more so than it is with Immobile, where the ball is just bouncing off and we're losing precious possession higher up in, uh, at the pitch. But he had to bring in changes. He had to bring in changes. And there's something about keys. You see, there are certain guys who understand monitor. Not everyone does. You see, there are quality players, there are amazing players, but sometimes amazing players don't know what money time is. There are guys who are, they're okay. They're not amazing. They're, they're okay. Like, Chiesa is a, is a pretty good player. He's not like top five players in the world. He, he's not world, world class, but I will always have, you see, during games like this, I'll always have Chiesa on my team. I'll always have, because he understands money time. Very few people do. Because come a semi... See, that's where I live. I don't care about Pescara, Norwich, or LG. I don't care about those, or even FC. I'm about the semi-final. Quarter-final. We need a dream. Extra time. Chiesa understands what it means to be okay. We need, the, we need to get a goal here. We don't need to pass the ball. We don't need to the ball around. We just need to... I need to be a hero. And having a guy like that is huge. So here is the dilemma. Do you start him? Or do you feel that maybe his strength is coming off the bench? It's, it's a tough one. Because all that matters is it's winning. It's not as easy as saying, oh, he scored, he should start. Maybe you think that, hmm, if I start him, maybe that ability to change the course of the game may be lost. But here's the thing, though, is... Chiesa is a guy who I think you keep on you you keep on the pitch all throughout because for Juventus he has started games and still come clutch, so he isn't a super sub merchant. He's a guy where oh no, no if you if you start me and it's money time I will find a way to I will find a way to to score. So it doesn't matter how well Berardi has played for the season whatsoever. Berardi ain't it. Berardi doesn't understand what money time is. He doesn't understand. Chiesa understands money time and here's the thing. It gets realer now because most likely you could be facing Portugal and Cristiano. So it's going to get much tougher. So there's no time to play. There is no time to play because right now it's, it's getting, it's, it's, it's now real. It's getting, you see, this was just a taster. This was a teaser. This was a teaser. See, the Euros are now getting real right now. They're getting real. So now the margin of error is nil. Did you see Don Roma safe? Did you see Don Roma safe? I'll post my, my reaction. Well, relax. I'll, I'll post my reaction. Did you see the normal? Because that save just shows like 50 levels. We see we're not like super, super, super say on six. Ultra instincts. We're rolling on ultra instincts level two, five, six, level two, five, six. So, yeah, so like in that case, it was amazing. Because remember, that ball from Spinat Sola, it wasn't the greatest. And it was actually hard for him to sort of control it because it had to sort of like hit him on the head. But the fact that he, that he, made a difficult ball and tried to control a difficult ball. And the move, because it was similar to like Beckham's um, goal against um, Argentina in the 98 World Cup. Um, control, lodge of dribble, get the defender out of there. First time volley. Ooh, sweet. That goal was sweet. And then Pessina, man, again, a guy who was on the B squad, obviously scoring against Wales. Basically, if you look at the just look at the I beg you just look and look at the instant replay of his of his of his goal. 
This guy, his face turned into a tomato. You could see all the ancestors, the emotions, the, all every Roman emperor. He used he he called upon all of the Roman emperors and put all his heart and desire into that freaking shot. So to pray just break down that ball in two. So so it, it was crazy, man. But Austria did their thing. I think I ha you have to credit Austria for giving Italy a game because I didn't think that Austria would test Italy's joy in the way that, that they did, and they almost won. They almost won, and and Nautovich had some good breakaways. Austria, if Austria just had better quality players, they could have done something. Disappointed himself a bit, so I thought he could have done done more. Um, and basically, I think it's the first goal that Italy have considered in about like 10, 15, or 20 games. Look at what it took to finally get that ball in um get that ball into the African net. It, it, it was crazy. Like the Austrian dude has pretty much go down into the the F score and come up with freaking Neil to pretty put that ball into that net. So Basically, um, and also Spinan Sola again, the guy, the guy every single time he's been like he's been Italy's most consistent and best player. He's been Italy's most consistent and best player, man. But you see, I just I still believe in him. I will always believe in him, but if I was advising Mancini, you probably... I've... But here's the thing, though. Here is the thing. See, Italy were the aggressors in this game, hence why they were the... See, so, see, I think Mancini, in hindsight, he would have thought, you know what, I should have gone with Locatelli to start with because we have to attack these guys. And I think Locatelli has better offensive instincts than Verratti does. But now, if they were to play a Belgium or a Portugal, I do feel that maybe you want to be a bit much more conservative and then counter. Because I think that if Italy play this open against Portugal or Belgium, they'll get sliced up. Because Austria had nobody. See, if Italy allow these counter-attacks to, to a Belgium or a Portugal, they'll get, they will get caught open. Especially against Portugal, who are counter-attack artists, they will get caught open. So I think Mancini needs to think long and hard as to his approach and the lineup that he takes. Um, because again, you have to you have to read the opposition because Portugal and Belgium is a wholly different outfit from, from Austria. Because look, Austria had a lot of breakaways, a lot of breakaways, and Anatovic caused a lot of issues. And Anatovic ain't Lukaku, Anatovic ain't um Cristiano, Anatovic. Ain't De Bruyne or how's that? Um, he ain't um, Diego Jota or Renato Sanchez, you know. So if he can cause you those kinds of issues, what could those other dudes um cause you, man? But look, man, for Italy, this th they needed this. This was so needed because it's a test. See, if they had beaten Austria like two zero, because see, I thought that they would have beaten them two zero in ninety, simple boom. If they had done that, then the notion be like, oh. Then you almost go, you, you probably go into the quarterfinal with a false sense of, of confidence. But with the what this shows is that okay, we can dig in deep, we can really go into our core. And what this also shows that is that this is a squad, is in the reserves and the guys on the bench can come in and they can do a job. So you can so if the guys starting can't do the job, you know, there are guys waiting on that bench to come on and change the course of the game. So and I think that is always a huge massive thing to happen. But no, look, man, no. These Euros have popped off because we already saw what Denmark did and what Italy have done right now. But look, man, um, I think the moral of this story is Chiesa, Chiesa, Chiesa. So kids, it's a very simple thing of you have to understand what money time means. And very few people understand what it means, but you must understand what money time means and you must respect, you must respect money time. You must respect money time. Um, so shout out to your boy um Martin Rosario. <laughs> Sorry, mistake. Shout out to your boy Latin Rosario. Latin Rosario says, Larco lives, baby. Fire emoji, sunglasses emoji. Latin Rosario. Well, look, Latin, your boy did it. I admit your boy did it. Your boy did it. Um 
if Italy had a better striker, Marco would have had at least two or three assists. And, and that's facts. If there was actually a better striker who actually knew how to strike, they'd have easily, um, he'd have easily three or four or five assists for sure, for sure. Um, from Abracadabra, man, thank you for the job. Abracadabra says, if Italy build, beats Belgium or Portugal, they're winning this. Um, you can't assume Italy beats France if France end up facing them in the semis. I can't, I can't, you can't just say that they are, they are, they are winning it, you know. And also, as well, as well, if Italy play England at Wembley, it is Wembley. It is Wembley. So, like, if, if it's the face Germany, that's different. But my thing is, like, I can't see that, I can't, you know, see, that's, you see, that's being reactionary because, yeah, if they beat them, that'd be huge. And that'd be huge. Now, that's going to be a tough ass game, a huge game. But you've got to respect France, man. Say what you want about France. France, see, France is a whole different beast from who Italy have faced. Italy have not faced anybody to the level of a France or even a Belgium or Portugal. So even if they'll beat Belgium or Portugal, it's a stretch. From Karl Mukian, thank you for the job, Karl Mukian, says that, big call I know, but who will Italy play, Belgium or Portugal? I, I believe Italy are playing Portugal. I just see Portugal beating Belgium. Yeah. Uh, I think that it's going to be a tight game, close game, tactical game. And I do believe that the quarterfinal will be Italy-Portugal. See, I would have liked Italy-Belgium. I think Italy-Belgium would have been an amazing footballing game to watch. Just in terms of a, a, a footballing showpiece, that would have been an amazing football game to watch. But if I'm being real with you, we are getting Italy-Portugal. I just see I, I, I just see Portugal beating Belgium. You know, I mean, it's going to be a game, man. That's going to be a game, you know. That's that's, that's definitely going to be a game. Um, but shout out to, to to the Italians, man. Uh, all right, what else are you guys saying, man? All right, let's 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 let's, let's ride this up. Let's ride this up. Um, all right, thank you for the super chat, Dub YSK Jackson. No, thank you for the super chat, Dub LSK Laxon. Thank you for the super chat, Dub LSK Laxon. So LSK Laxon says, pest control didn't get the memo. Rats on the loose. You know what? It's, it's it is what it is, man. Um, I have to now take this um abuse from from people and, and and so forth. He didn't have his best game. He didn't have his best game, but he was coming back from injury. You know, a fully fit Verratti could say something. A fully fit Verratti could say something, but he was coming back from injury. But look, it is what it is. He didn't do what was needed, and the guys that came on they changed the course of the game. They changed the course of the game because I mean, who who laid that pass for Pessina's goal? Was that Locatelli or was that Bellotti? Because I want to know, like, who 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 laid the pass? Because I couldn't tell whether it was um, um, Bellotti or Locatelli who, who who laid that pass, man. But look, guys, I mean, okay, Marco, he didn't he didn't do his thing, man. But like, let's guys, let's keep it real. He wasn't the worst player on that pitch. Um, he wasn't the worst player on pitch. Um, Belotti, it was a Belotti, Belotti. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but look, that was no, that, that was horse. Because if there was Lolo Locatelli, then that makes the Marco narrative if, even worse, man. So, um, so I actually feel that Italy got worse as the game progressed. As far as the midfield is concerned, at least two of Barella, Verratti, and Jorginho should always be on the pitch. Um, no, no, no. I think as the game wore on, yes, Austria grew stronger. Italy grew a lot more nervous. And I think that they lost their discipline and they lost their focus and they were just all over the, the place. So, yeah, as as the game wore on, it was benefiting Austria a lot more, which is why you have to just look at. Obviously, they, they got a bit lucky with the offside, but again, everyone needs a bit of luck. And just the, the substitutes, man, you know, that is the benefit of having a good squad is that guys can come in and just completely change the, the course of the game. Thank you, bro. Guys, if you're here, support your boy. Like and subscribe, guys. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, man. Like and subscribe, guys. You know. Um, Real Do says, besides Kiesa, Italy has no wide players. Cristiano Ronaldo writes, Real Deal, your boy, your hero, my hero as well, Cristiano, will see what he does tomorrow night, man. It all goes on tomorrow night. Um, 
No, Berardi is still good. And Cena is still pretty good. Spinozzi, you could argue, is a wide player, but the most clutch player that Italy have is Chiesa. And I think Mancini has realized that no, the guy who is ready for money time is Chiesa. Chiesa is there for money time. So um, from Steph, thank you for the for the dub, Steph. Croatia versus Spain results prediction. Um, I'm feeling a, either a 1-0 or a 2-1 Spain. I'm feeling a 1-0 or, or a, a, a 2-1 Spain. I'm almost, I'm almost willing to go for like a 1-0 Spain and, and perhaps probably in extra time. Probably in extra time, man. Um, probably in extra time, man. That's probably what I'm thinking, man. Um, HH, go to it is money. If he wins this Euros, R9, thumbs down. Abracadabra, relax and chill. Relax and chill. Go to it is amazing. That was definitely a superb goal. And go to it is top five strikers of his generation. Or relax. He is he's only just under R9. He is definitely one of the best strikers of his generation, but go to it is below R9. But look, that was a damn good goal by, by go to it. That's goal by go to it was, was money. That go to goal was money. Um Khalil Khan, thank you. New member, man. Khalil Khan, what a what a welcome to the members club. Baby, welcome to that members club, man. Welcome to that members club. Um, yeah. It did, it did, big time, big time. Like again, which is to you that a score, a a bench is very important. Having a very strong bench, no, having a good squad is important because you may have an amazing team, but if they're not saying anything, then you have to react. Which is why it is so insane that Luis Enrique took twenty twenty four players. Like Luis Enrique, are you psycho? You need to use every amount of that 26 as possible because you never know when you need to call upon someone to change the course of, of the game. You know, like imagine if Italy didn't have Keza or they couldn't call up Keza, they probably end up going to penalties, man. So having a squad and guys to call upon that you know you can call upon to say what's up is, is key. So for me, I think Keza is a guy who has to start. But now Persina is a dude who, you know, know that, bro, you can, he, he can come on and she, see, Persina is a guy who I still think should be on, on, the, on the bench and can be a great super sub. Keza is a starter. Because I've said from, from jump, when we did the whole AC preview thing, I said, no, Keza should start ahead of Berardi. I don't care what Berardi has done for the season. Keza is a guy you need in your team. Because it's not about performance or how, or how good he played. It's can you cash the check, come on. You need, you need a guy who, who cashes checks. You need a cash check in your team. Um. I mean, boy, Bupinder, man. And uh, thank you for the dub, man. Give Austria their flowers better than Turkey. 1,000%. Austria sh did themselves proud. They did themselves proud. They, they played great. They played great. And they gave Italy a game. They gave Italy a game. They gave them a scare. If they just had better quality players, they would have caused Italy even a lot more issues. So for, for Austria, no, no. You see, like, there is nothing more Austria could have done. Because they don't have the players, they don't have the individuals, they don't have the personnel. And Austria just don't have guys of the skill or individual ability level as a Chiesa, as a Persina, who have this ability to change the course of the game in the way that they did. So of their limitations and of their skill level, they were amazing. They were amazing. Steph, man, thank you for the dub, for the, for the thing, Steph. Thank you for the dub, man. Can France almost bot it against Sway Switzerland? What this Euros is trying to tell us, guys, is never assume. Never, ever assume. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Never, ever assume. That is what you always have to be wary of. I expect France to beat Switzerland. I expected it to, to beat Austria. Don't be surprised if Switzerland... Give France a serious goal. I believe France will beat Switzerland, but I won't be surprised if, let's say, they, they, they take it to extra time. I, will, I won't be surprised because I think you were just saying to guys, no, 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 you big boys, man, relax. I know you're all your big boys, but relax and respect the small teams, man. Um, HH, which nation would be better for Italy, Belgium or Portugal?
That's a great question. That's a great question because if Italy play open, if Italy play the way that, that they did against, um, to, like today against Austria, Belgium will dis will dis destroy them on the counter. They will absolutely dis destroy them. Um, if Italy maintain this approach, I may say the better matchup for them might be might be Portugal. Both are tough matchups, and I think in both of those games they'd be underdogs. But because of the way in which that they play and how open they are, Belgium are more attacking. Um, see, what Belgium wants is for you to open up to them. Hence why Belgium is going to be a bad match against Portugal because Portugal wants to open up. So Belgium will find this hard. What Belgium wants is for you to play attacking. Then, oh my gosh, they will love it. So I think it would be better for Italy to face Portugal because Portugal are not as attacking. But they are dangerous on the counter. But Belgium wants to attack and wants to move the ball up. So if, put it this way, if De Bruyne had the kind of opportunities that Sabitza or Arnautovic had, he would cut them open. So, yeah, man, you have to really be wary of um, which, which which guys you want to say what's up to. Um, real deal, man. Think of it a real deal. Real deal says Messi loses the Copa versus Neymar. What will that mean to you? Um... See, in one hand, you could say that, well, look at his team. His team is a lot more weaker. Um, but based off of just optics, you, 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 don't, you don't want that. And my advice to Messi is don't lose to Neymar. Don't lose to Neymar in the Copa America final. Don't lose to Neymar in, in, in the Copa America final. Because people say, well, Brazil are the stronger team. They're the favorites. The optics of that of Neymar with Brazil, especially if Neymar gives the man of the match performance and it's critical in the win, the, Twitter will go crazy. Twitter will go crazy and Twitter will, will go into town if that happens, man. So you have to be wary on that. And from Hamza3096, man, thank you for the dub. Every champion has at least one game like Italy to today. Yes. Yes. Um, for France, it was the Argentina game um, in 2018. For... Um, um in 20 in 2014 for for Germany it was the Algeria game that, that they had um like even in 2010 Spain it was like the Paraguay game you look at Euro 2016 for Portugal almost every game for them they had to pretty much go into their court to, to react so for a lot of guys yeah man it's definitely a um um, it's definitely a case of whether or not you have to read France and, and say what's up. So, and these things are character building, you know, because very few teams who win a competition just do it um, straight. So I have a easy path where, where, they, where they don't have to do nothing, man. So you always have to be tested. Um, Austria was constantly asking questions. Are this is defense. If Portugal defend and counterattack, they may just hammer them. Yes. And that was the point that I was making. Italy can't. Italy cannot play this open against Portugal or Belgium. If they they do, they will lose, guaranteed, guaranteed. Because the danger is that Italy have not faced it's an attack as good as what Portugal have or what Belgium have. So Mancini has to think long and hard and very carefully as to how he he wants to approach. Because if Italy attack like this with guys like Banucci and Acerbi in defence against Belgium and things attack, they, they will get beat. They will get beat, man. Um, thank you for the one, Arman. Prediction for the Belgium and Portugal game, man. Thank you for the drop, Arman. Close game. Close game. I think the matchup suits Portugal. And I, for me, I think that it may be 1-1 and either Portugal win on penalties or Portugal win 2-1 in extra time. But I think it's going to be a close game. Like it won't be like three zero four zero. It won't be an open game. It will be like a closest kind of game, a chess game. I just think that Portugal's their experience, experience of guys like Pepe, Cristiano, Renato Sanchez, a lot of these guys who've been here and already done it before. And because I still have questions of Belgium's defense, Belgium's defense still looks a bit worrying and unshaken. And the defense hasn't been tested. Now let's be real: the teams that they face in the, in the group stage, those guys. You know, and also like Portugal had to go through hellfire 
through their group stage to meet them. For Belgium, it's been plain sailing. What Finland, Denmark, and Russia have been plain sailing. So I just think that it favors Portugal. It favors Portugal. So I'm saying like either like a 2-1 Portugal or 1-1, one, one, and it goes to penalties, man. Um, can you see Portugal playing safe or more attacking? Um, safe. Safe. For sure, safe. They won't, they won't attack safe. Um, Chiesa did more than Mbappe at this Euros. Mbappe has been influential in a lot of goals that France has scored. But if you mean by... Okay, yeah, he scored a goal. But how is scoring a goal doing more than all that Mbappe has done performance-wise? So, no, that's being disingenuous. But, as I said, um, you have to respect the clutchness of your boy, um, Keza. I told you, that's why his name is called um, Federico Clutch Keza. Federico Clutch Keza, the guy is super, super clutch. So, guys, look, man, let's get ready for the hangouts. Let's do this hangout. And we have a lot to, to discuss, man. So, guys, peace out. Stay true, stay real, and I'll see you guys at the hangouts. Peace, 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 peace. Um, I remember, man, Keza, Chelsea awaits you. Just saying. If you want, I'm just saying, I'm not saying that's anything, but Chelsea awaits you, Keza. Chelsea awaits you. We are the UCL winners, man. Come to the UCL winners, man. Mm -hmm.